at 133 pounds, where we have a big matchup. It's gonna be well in the favor of the Iowa Hawkeyes as they put forth number three, Austin DeSanto. And for the Huskers, they will put up a senior, Brian Pesca. And a matchup that should, could be intriguing because Pesca has not wrestled since November 4th when he competed at the Dactronics Open. Going against a wrestler for Iowa's ranked number three. DeSanto from Iowa, he is a goer, kind of similar to Alex Marinelli, their 165 pounder. He's going to wrestle hard for seven minutes of the match, and he's going to just shoot, shoot, shoot on you. Look for Pesca to kind of tie up his arms, maybe try and slow him down, dig in those underhooks, and get to some of his better positions. And again, this is the last weight of the day. I was up 16 13, so Nebraska needs that at least a decision to tie things up and send things to criteria. Otherwise, a major decision, tech fall or pin, will win it for the Cornhuskers here on this Sunday afternoon. Both wrestlers right now kind of snapping each other down, looking, looking to get to the legs, and Pesca's doing a good job of not letting. There, and then there goes DeSanto with his bread and butter fireman's carry. Usually he catches opponents on the back. Pesca rolls through. So two point takedown for DeSanto. So DeSanto with the takedown, ranked number three in the nation, has a 13 1 record. As DeSanto is called with a potentially dangerous move, he'll reset with Pesca on bottom. But DeSanto 5 0 in the Big Ten, 8 1 in duels. His only loss on the year coming to number eight, Austin Gomez of Iowa State in their duel against the Cyclones earlier in the year. Good mat return there for by, De by DeSanto to put Pesca back on his knees. DeSanto, a transfer from Drexler University, qualified for the NCAA tournament a year ago with Drexler, but he did not place. He did have a 29 and seven record including a fourth place finish at the Cliff Keen Invitational and a sixth place finish at the Southern S Scuffle as we have a caution on DeSanto. Minute 21 left in the opening period. 40 seconds of riding time credited to DeSanto. And they both go off the mat. Brian Pesca is really looking to come to his feet, trying to get out of bounds. Good job by DeSanto, getting him off the mat before the escape. And uh, Pesca, very limited action, like mentioned. Hasn't wrestled since in an official match since November, where he went 4-2 at the Dactronics Open. He's a senior from Omaha, Nebraska. He went to Scott Catholic a wrestling powerhouse here in the Cornhusker State as both wrestlers go out of bounds once again. we will reset the center of the mat with 47 seconds to go in the first period. DeSanto's gonna go optional start, most likely cut him, let him up to his feet, give him one point escape, look for another takedown. Yep, there's an the escape for Pesca. Makes it two to one. Pesca's doing a good job digging in double underhooks here. He doesn't want him to get to that fireman's carry like he did in the beginning. Short time here and DeSanto snaps him down for an easy go behind two points. So DeSanto, two more points, makes it four to one. As we come to a conclusion of this first period at 133 pounds. And as the Nebraska bench exploded out of their seats there, 
He really wanted to stall in there on DeSanto. I think Nebraska took bottom here, and DeSanto again wants to go optional start. So it's a one point escape for Pesca. And now both in neutral position. Pesca needs to get a takedown here to tie things up in regular score, but riding time is at a minute 27 for Lee, or excuse me, for DeSanto, and DeSanto's gonna get another takedown for two more points. Pesca goes for a throw right there, and DeSanto felt it coming, kind of slipped his arms out, and ended up on top for the takedown. Pesca gets the escape again, makes it six to three, but DeSanto again gets two more points on a takedown. And both wrestlers go off the mat. But DeSanto's game plan has been take down, let him up, get another takedown. And he's up eight to three, trying to clinch this duel for Iowa. Again, he goes optional start. He, he wants to wrestle on his feet. Um, last year, watched him wrestle at Drexel, and that's where he wanted to be was on his feet. Takedown after takedown. It's, in, it's important here that, you know, Pesca gets to some of his ties here. He needs to slow him down a little bit, maybe get to some of his own attacks. Pesca led up again by DeSanto, and two more points. Makes it 12 to five with 40 seconds left in the second period. And again, DeSanto lets him up. And they're gonna call a stalemate there. So they're gonna reset once again in the center. 30 seconds left, second period. And there's two more points for a takedown for DeSanto. DeSanto's just using the snap down, go behind offense, snap down, double leg, just getting to some of his power positions and Pesca, Pesca can't really stop what he's doing right now. Another takedown for DeSanto after letting Pesca up. And we will go to the third period with DeSanto leading 16 to seven. And only two minutes away from clinching this dual victory for the Hawkeyes. Caution on top man. It's getting pretty loud in here with the Iowa fans. Maybe. He thought he heard something, it wasn't quite the whistle. Iowa fans on their feet here at the Devaney Center. One point escape for Pesca. And DeSanto again gets another takedown, makes it 19 to seven. Again, another escape for the senior for Nebraska. And one leg, and there's the takedown again for DeSanto. Makes it 21 to eight. DeSanto's really looking to put the pressure on. He's looking for the tech fall for his team. Nice double leg takedown on the edge here. Get out of bounds. They go out of bounds again, 22 to nine. Austin DeSanto, the sophomore with the lead over Brian Pesca of Nebraska, 23 to 10 is the score. And with the takedown again, and DeSanto motions towards the Nebraska bench after the tech fall. DeSanto went to his bread, bread and butter, got to his shots, and and DeSantis got to be careful, taunting the Nebraska fans and the Nebraska bench. 